everyone, it's Amy from Yo So Boho. Welcome back to a Thursday night thrift video. Tonight I'm going to do a third episode of the What's It Worth? So if you haven't seen my first two, I will link them down below. Basically, I put out a bunch of things that I've thrifted and we talk about them and then I tell you which one is worth the most. So take a look around. See what you might think. It's a coffee canister. Do you have a guess? All right, now that you have your guess, let's jump into it and talk about these things. All right, let's talk about this little guy right here. This is an ashtray, it seems to be an ashtray. It has this little crimped edge. It's glass, it's kind of in an amethyst color. And it has all these little bubbles in it, can you see them? But look at how uniform they are. They're very uniform. And they're natural, they're put in the glass like that. And that treatment is called Bolicante. I'll put it on the screen so you can read it and remember it. Bolicante is the the actual way that they make the glass and they control it. It stands for that controlled bubble. This is likely a piece made around Murano. And I say that because of the controlled bubbles. And I also say that because of the really smooth pontal mark here. So if you see something that looks like it wasn't even attached and it's smooth like that it's a pretty good indication that you have a quality piece I got this piece when I was thrifting in a Goodwill in North Carolina I brought it back from there I have it on the website I'll show you all of the pieces I have on the website I believe I am list I've listed about four out of the six of these but I don't want to give away the price right now, so I don't want to show you yet. <laughs> but this was a nice little find. This piece was found again at the Goodwill right down the street. And here I'll let you see what it is. It's kind of a little picture, really nicely hand painted. This is all hand done. It's got this great bird on it. Look at the tail feathers. And it's marked, I'm gonna butcher this totally, but Royal Godewagen, Gouda Holland, hand-painted Cora. Cora, I believe, is the name of the pattern. And I believe that because I'll show you some other pieces that I found that were titled or listed under Cora. Really nicely done piece. Um, not sure of the age, um, although by the time I edit this, I will probably have that on screen. <laughs> um, just loved the colors of it and thought it was pretty fantastic in the way that it was painted. Around the corner, let's talk about this guy. So again, found him at my local Goodwill and just loved the top of it. it turns out it's pewter it had its original paperwork in it so this piece was made by tin woodsman pewter company and there's a little bit of history in here about the company um, they've been in business since 1985 I'm not quite sure although I think this is vintage and um, I'll show you one other piece that I found like this um, but obviously it's never been used but they make these beautiful pewter spoons and pieces and I will show you um, some they're all marked so what a great find right and this says coffee on the top of it so it still has a really nice seal you can put your coffee in there it says coffee this is really great, it's all raised. And then it has room here for the spoon. So you can do your, you know, your little scoops. 
really nice piece quality art piece you know when they're made like this from a studio you know that they're somebody put a lot of love into making this and again I was very lucky to find it this one is listed on the website and you will see at the end what I have it listed for this guy this guy again I found at my local Goodwill actually I believe five out of the six of these came from that store so stay out of it <laughs> don't go there actually it's not open yet so you can't run there anyway <laughs> I'm gonna be first in line when they do reopen this character is made by Chris Dunn I'll show you the little stamp here Chris Chris Dunn and he is just a resin bunny he's got these carrots great character very detailed and I just I loved him for how he looked but I learned that these are quite collectible Chris Dunn characters some of them go for quite a bit of money and we'll get to that in a little bit but he just was adorable so I bought him not really you know caring what his value was but he's not listed on the site because I fell in love with him <laughs> and after I learned about him I I wanted to find more pieces I've only bought so far one other piece but I will show it to you here he is a bookshelf you can see the book is actual actually the shelf right <laughs> so he hangs on a wall he's very heavy he hangs on a wall and you can use that little book for a shelf I have you know set a setting on eBay for these characters and I always go and check them out and I was really lucky to have jumped on one day when somebody listed him for $14 which when you see what he's worth, you, you will understand why I jumped in and had to get him. <laughs> so now I have these two pieces. I would love to have more. I imagine someday maybe <laughs> I'll have a little group of rabbits and though they would be beautiful in, you know, a little person's um, bedroom. So maybe eventually they'll become a baby gift me put him back all right finally let's talk about this piece so this is kind of a gin ginormous glass vase 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 however fancy you want to be what do you think about this I hesitated to pick it up because it's kind of wonky it's very let's just call it very artsy it has these random pieces of glass it's a blown piece just like this piece, this is blown glass. This one, however, and this is why I brought these two pieces out. This one has a really sloppy pontal mark. So although it's been ground down quite a bit, and this is sanded, this is really kind of ugly. It's not sharp. Sometimes you have to be really careful because some of these can be really sharp and actually cut you. So this, there was some care taken here but there's really no rhyme or reason for the pieces of glass. You can actually feel some of them. There's big bubbles. It's just random things rolled into this piece that they blew. So this might be somebody's taste. This crazy, colorful, cool thing with all these random, random pieces in it. Um, it's not quite mine. I do respect, you know, whoever built this, you know, may have had a vision or may have just loved how, you know, adding these pieces came together. Um, you know, that's, that's great. I think it'll look great on somebody's shelf, you know, especially in a very artsy kind of space. Let's get started with her. This is a piece 
beautiful piece of gypsum white pottery that was made by Sandy Whitefeather of Whitefeather Studios, Tucson, Arizona. And I'll show you on the bottom in a second. This is a storyteller figure. And if you've never seen these before, they're pretty amazing. Oftentimes they have all these little characters. They have a main character that's telling a story. And I actually picked up two of these when I found this. I found this at my local Goodwill and was thrilled to find it um, just because it's it's got history and it's gorgeous. And it was handmade, hand painted, and has all of the information on the bottom of it. So there's the label for White, White Feather Studios. And then the title of this piece is Nana. It's actually the grandmother of the artist. The artist's name is Sandy Whitefeather. And her grandmother was, um, you know, important to her and she modeled this after her. And then here it's a limited edition. I believe that says 146 out of 1,000. And like I said, it's signed by Sandy herself. These are these white feathers are usually painted on all the bottom of their figurines. It's just fantastic. And like I said, I found two. I'll show him too. So he's really cool. His characters are climbing all over. And a lot of times you'll see like one climbing up the back. <laughs> you'll see all kinds of symbolism in these. Sometimes you'll see animals and little symbols for locations and stuff. He's pretty dusty. But I'm, how cool are they? I was really happy to find them. And this studio, I believe, I'll, I'll have to look up some information, but I believe the daughter of Sandy was still trying to make and sell some of these pieces. I, I still think they might be being made. Now these pieces are a little bit older and of course this piece being a limited edition, um, you know, there's only a thousand of them out there. So, all right, we'll take him back. Well, we can show his bottom. He's still signed, initialed by the artist. Um, I think this was an original price on him, 180 which is interesting, huh? Maybe maybe that helps you with your guesses. Let's start with the value. That guy, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Look at that big bubble right there. I have no idea. I think this is one of those pieces that I do not have listed. I'm considering putting it on eBay with just a, a low, you know, bid. Because I just, I don't know. It, it's considered art. I haven't seen, it's one of a kind. I haven't seen anything like it. I don't know if other people will see it as I see it. A little, you know, kind of thrown together, a little wonky. Even the construction of it, you can tell. It was likely somebody's studio project. Maybe they were taking a, a blown glass class and this is what came out of it. That's my guess anyway. So I really don't see a high value on this. I would say... Maybe in the 20, mid 20s. Um, it's definitely not Murano. <laughs> um, there are some pieces this big that are Murano and they, they do well. But this guy is probably just a studio piece and, you know, maybe $20. He is a little bit of a surprise. Although they've come down a little bit in price recently and maybe that's indicative of the one that I got for 14. But he recently sold, I think, for 35 plus shipping. Um, I'll have to look that up, because in my head I have, you know, right around $40 um, for value on him, and I would say that's probably fair. So this guy, I really don't know. I've only been able to find one other piece on Worth Point. It sold quite a bit of time ago. And on my website, I have this listed currently at $40. And that is with shipping. If you think about it, shipping on this piece is probably between 
Um, well, it'll, I'll pack it really well, but it's probably a 12 to $15 ship on that. So I think it's priced, it's priced well. This guy right here, I'll show you some of the pieces that I found that are really well priced. I mean, the plates and stuff I've seen are $95 and up. He's a smaller piece. He is, you know, beautiful and well painted. I have him priced on the website for $44. Again, that's including shipping. So I think that that's when when you look at the other pieces that I'm finding out there, I think that that's a pretty good guess on him. This guy is also on my website. He's not worth as much as you might imagine, even though a Murano piece with controlled bubbles. And he has some age. I'm, I'm not seeing these pieces sell for a ton of money. I'll show you some of the comps. I have him priced on my website for $34. Again, with shipping, so He's still kind of in that $25, $26 price range that I'm seeing um, compared on Facebook. So where are we at? We got, who knows, 40-ish, 40, 44, 35. If you guessed it was her, you were correct. I have her listed on my website for $50 and that includes shipping. That to me is a little heartbreaking because she's listed at that only because her comps are not that high. These pieces have gone down in price um, over time. I have her listed separately than the other piece that I have. I have them listed at 40 and I have her listed at 50. I think together, on a shelf in a collection, you know, they would be great. Um, she's a limited edition piece. I do think personally that she's worth much, much more than $50. I just can't, um, I just can't find comps that, you know, will justify the pricing of what I imagine she would be worth. I know that when they originally sold, and I know that there was a rerun or something similar to her, that was done within the past couple of years. Um, I'll have to look for that information. I read it a while ago. But I think $50 is a very fair price. She's very heavy. Her shipping is going to cost quite a bit. But, you know, I think that their values should go up because Native American, in general, Native American art, um, to me, it's just... It, I'm half tempted to keep her just because I have such a, a place in my heart for um, Native American art. So. so if you guessed her, you won. You won um, bragging rights. <laughs> Be sure down below, tell me if you guessed, if you played along, what you guessed, why you guessed it. Did you get her? Were you right? Thanks for playing along. Keep your eyes out for these things. Like I said, all of these were under $5. And all of them are worth, most of them are worth over 40. So it's a pretty good return if you are looking to resell and get beautiful treasures back into the homes of people who don't even know that they're out there and they were missing them in their lives. <laughs> all right, everybody. Take care. Lots of love. Talk to you again next week.